Well, no, my heart and my kia ora. Welcome to today's live stream. My name is Monique Bradley. I'm, I'm really honoured and humbled to host this live stream uh, for Diabetes New Zealand. Uh, this week. This is in fact the first of two live streams that we'll be hosting this month and I have my own diabetes story so I come from a family history of type 2 diabetes and I was uh, formerly pre-diabetic myself so this is a cause very close to my heart and I'm very honoured to be part of the conversation tonight. It's really interesting to learn that um, every year more than a thousand New Zealanders with diabetes actually lose a lower limb every year. Those are big statistics, especially when almost 600 of those could have been preventable. And in fact, it's, it's not a common topic that is discussed, foot care and foot health. And that's really what we're here to discuss this month with the Diabetes Action Month campaign, all about step up for diabetes. So jump in tonight in the conversation. We've got some great experts on call to answer your questions and to open up that conversation about how you or someone you love can look after their feet this month. So tonight, my guests on the live stream, we have two amazing podiatrists, very knowledgeable. You're, it's your opportunity to ask them those big questions that you need the answers for. Please welcome to tonight's live stream, Michelle Garrett and Aaron Jackson. Kia ora to you both. Welcome. Um, so first of all, for people who have never met you before, you're both podiatrists. So first of all, um, Michelle, if you'd just like to share with everybody a little bit about your background. Good everybody. Um, I've been a podiatrist since I left school, so for quite some time. And I've worked in the private arena and then I ended up working in the high risk foot clinic since about, oh, for a long time. And that kind of piqued my interest in that area and I've been working there ever since um, and led me to be researching in the area of the diabetic foot. Um, and I've been really fortunate enough to be on um, some advisory groups and working with um, organisations to help improve outcomes for people with diabetes. So um, bring on your questions. We'd love to help people out and help them where we can with some guidance tonight. Oh, kia ora, Michelle. Thank you so much for that. And Aaron, welcome to tonight's live stream. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, kia ora, everyone. Um, I, my role at the moment, I've, I've come from, I was in pra private practice for about 10 years or so, and I'm now currently working at um, AUT at the university. Um, and I'm one of the lecturers there who's involved in teaching our podiatry students uh, about footwear, um, foot biomechanics um, and orthotics. Great, um, incredible knowledge as well. And I have to say, Aaron, I've already worked with you on camera over the last couple of weeks um, for Diabetes New Zealand, and you gave me the best recommendations about footwear. So hopefully we'll get some of that knowledge out of you uh, for the audience um, and everybody watching tonight as well. So I can see our um, live stream over here uh, on my screen as well. So if you do have questions anytime during the live stream, send them on through and we will do our very best to share those questions with our experts tonight. We've already had some come through even prior to tonight's live stream so we will do our very best to get your questions answered but first of all let's talk about foot health um, there's some really big questions that we really want to know about and if you need more information by the way you can see on the bottom of the screen if you need to know more head to the diabetes website which is diabetes.org.nz or you can go to diabetesactionmonth.org for further information hey michelle tonight i want to start with you i've got some big questions about your background and your professional expertise but first of all a, a podiatrist what does a podiatrist actually do for people who don't know or have never worked with one before? That's a um, really good question. Um, originally, we were called chiropodists. So if you hear the word chiropodist, podiatrist, um, same thing. Podiatrists are really the go-to people for your feet. They're specialists for feet, like you'd go to your dentist for your teeth or your optometrist for your eyes. And um, podiatrist expertise is in the lower limb. Um, we study the whole body, but our expertise is in the area of the lower limb. And we cover things like, um, Aaron will probably talk a bit more about this, but mu muscle function and how we move and walk and run. Um, we cover things like minor surgery for ingrown nails, verrucas, um, debridement and looking after things, um, common foot conditions like corns and calluses. Or, 
and also um, some of us specialise in wound care and looking after um, lower limb wounds as well as um, diabetes prevention, foot checks, um, in-depth screening and checking of feet and recommendations on footwear and orthotics. So just um, a whole raft of things. People that are affected by arthritis like gout and um, that can quite often is associated with diabetes as well. So, and children, um, so cradle to the whole, the whole whānau. All actually, ages, so. yep. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Um, so one of the questions that I really want to know, Michelle, is that I've heard that diabetes is, um, in fact, the leading cause of preventable amputation here in New Zealand. But most people living with, whether it's type 1, type 2, with whatever type of diabetes they have, they don't even know that they're at risk. I've seen this firsthand in my own whānau as well. Um, and a lot of people um, with diabetes don't don't know that they need to keep an eye on their feet. There's, maybe there's not enough education about that. Maybe those conversations aren't being had within the, in the whānau group as well. So they don't necessarily see a, a problem with their feet until it's too late. Again, I saw this firsthand in my own family, with, in fact, with my dad. Why do you think this is happening? Where's the, where is this breakdown? Um, that's just such a multifaceted um, question. Some people are really fukama, like shy about their feet and mm. don't want to get them out. So when it comes to um, we, you know, how they recommend with their diabetes that you have your annual check with your um, GP or diabetes nurse, getting your foot check, people will try and avoid that. Um, you know, they might not be prepared for it. They may have not washed their feet or have holy socks on, whatever, but people can be quite shy about their feet. Sometimes it's really hard just getting to your appointments and, and making that um, diabetes checkup as well and you're worried about getting bad news. And sometimes if things aren't hurting, we tend to hide them as well because we don't want to bother people. Um, there's a whole raft of things why. Some is a, um, a time when people t start to bring their feet out and may think about um, getting things checked. So we're coming into the, the right time of year for that. But yeah, it really is um, multifaceted. And people think, you think, um, feet have a, quite a significance for a lot of um, cultures and for a lot of religions around washing your feet, looking after your feet. So for some people, they're very special as well. So we all have different relationships with our feet, different attitudes to that as well. So That yeah. makes a lot of sense. I can understand that. Coming from a, a Māori family as well, it's, um, you know, you're right about the whakamā uh, issue. I don't think it's um, something we all <laughs> talk about a lot as well. So I yeah. guess one of my, one of my questions um, that I want to know is for somebody with diabetes, what, what sort of foot issues or changes should someone with diabetes be looking for? Yeah, we talk about checking your feet daily. Well, that's great. And like you say, what do we look for? If you know your feet well and you are checking them, you'll notice any little changes that it might be starting to happen. So that's why we recommend that kind of daily thing. So you get to know your feet. And so any minor little changes in colour or... Um, perhaps redness or swelling or bruising or blisters or hard skin changing colour. Um, and remembering that for different skin tones, um, something that's inflamed or red, getting red and angry, may not look as angry um, for some people. And if you've got diabetes, mm -hmm. it may not get as bad. So I guess it's around checking and remembering to check your um, nails for ingrowing in between your toes, for for toe jams, but you can get tinea and things. And round the back of your um, heel as well, because it's not an easy area to, to get to. And for any splits and cracks, because that's where bugs can get in if the skin's broken, like round your heel or in between your toes as well. So just gotcha. really little changes, any anything different. And um, if there's any injuries, I think I've got just with that, with when you're checking um, around that, if you do see a little in injury, I always think of the three C's, and that's not COVID, COVID, COVID. That's <laughs> just um, check it, clean it, and cover it. And then, um, so just, yeah, if you do find something, do that, and then seek some advice on it. 
a great tip, really good tip there. And I know that some of the people in the um, in the stream uh, have you have just said, um, oh, we're looking for some really good tips. And I've just noticed on the stream, is there some uh, challenges with the um, with the um, sound? We're all okay. No, everybody can hear, that's great. So there's a question in the stream also that I'd like to ask you, Michelle. It says, I suffer from burning feet all the time. This is a great question, what can I do? This is from Gaylene in the uh, comments there. Okay, um, it depends. First, first thing I'd do would be to um, see your GP and, and get checked, because there's many reasons that you can um, get burning feet and sometimes it can be a sign that the nerve endings in your feet aren't working um, as well as they were and one of the first signs can be burning um, so some and if that doesn't settle there is medications that you can um, your doctor can prescribe to manage the pain and also there's some topical creams um, that you can talk to your podiatrist or your pharmacist around um, that have caps in, in, in them that can help um, just uh, prevent some of that burning happening as well. But the first thing I would do would be to um, visit your um, doctor and get some advice on making sure you know what the cause of that burning is as well. Absolutely, it's a very, very good point. I hope, Gaylene, that answers your question in the stream there as well. Um, uh, uh, quite a few people who are just saying here that they're not able to see the bottom of their feet. And I think it's probably a good time to have that conversation now. Um, so what, what's a good way if somebody is at home and they can't look after their feet um, or they're struggling, what, is, what are some good tips and tricks on how to look after your feet and, and help with your foot health? First thing, if you've got grandkids, train them to want to look after your feet, rub your feet for you. That would be a, a, a good first place. But if you can't see the bottom of them, um, a mirror is really good. Uh, just a small mirror that you can pop on the ground and then you can look in a, at the bottom of your feet and even a magnifying mirror as well because sometimes if your eyesight's not so good it can just help um, magnify those things so that you can see your feet. Um, some people find perhaps not on the ground but if they get one with a longish handle that can work really well as as well. So, But if you've got a, um, a family member that can assist you and help with having a, a daily just get it into your routine of whether it's in the morning or at the end of the day where somebody just has a look at, at your feet and if you're rubbing cream in them then it's a really good time but the mirror is really great. works quite well you super can do a great selfie point. stick too actually oh, that's a good idea i like it yeah i like it you, you um actually. and i've I've noticed too that Diabetes New Zealand has released an app uh, called the My Diabetes Journey app, which I think is absolutely brilliant because you can actually take photos of your feet or get somebody to take photos of your feet and you can actually upload those to the app, which I think is super handy. So you can actually reference any changes um, and then of course go to your um, GP or your diabetes nurse if, and show them those photos. Yeah. So that's super handy too. Great idea, I was having um, a look at that today. Yep. Okay, so yeah, it's a great app. I've just had another question come through from Diane. Um, let me just have a look here in the news feed. Diane, is that Diane Billing? Yes. Ah, great, all about toenails. Is it important to keep your toenails trimmed? And who can help you with this? Good question. Um, well, <laughs> yes, if, probably if you don't want holes in your socks, it's a good idea. Um, and every. <laughs> Everybody has different preferences as to how um, short they like their nails. The, um, the thing with them is not to cut them too short because you don't want them cutting into that soft um, flesh around the edge of your toes because if you cut down, you can't see what you're doing necessarily down the side of them. And also if you leave sharp edges, it can dig in. So, and everybody's, um, I'd get advice from your podiatrist as well to the best um, shape for your particular toenail as well because some are straight across and some are slightly curved but filing them too regularly can help rather than if you're a bit nervous about um, cutting them it can help keep them down as well so yeah and a if really they're, they're, really they can be hard as well 
of course, a really good point there. Now, one of the things I've learned from the diabetes video that's actually just gone out on the website and the, the Facebook page as well, which I got to be part of, was the importance of having a nail kit as well. Can you talk into that and tell us what we should keep in those kits to look after our feet? Uh, the, yeah, a good pair of um, sharp nail um, cutters or nippers because they're easier to judge where you're cutting. A, a file in that as well so that you can keep any sharp um, rough bits off to stop them pressing in. Some people quite like having a um, like an emery board that's on a paddle like a foot um, file which is quite good when people were talking about being able to check the fact that it's hard to get to them if it's on a longish handle then it's easy to actually um, help keep some of that dry skin down but remember always get your foot risk check first because if you have loss of sensation um, neuropathy you might file a bit too vigorously or you might cut a bit too aggressively so so know the state of your feet and get in to the practice of some safe foot care habits and some cream would be good as well a very, very good point there too. And actually, I was just going to lead into that question is how do you know your level of risk? How do you know where you're at? I've, I've got a, the specific question is how do you know if you are at risk of complications with your feet? So can we talk into those risk levels? Because my understanding is there's three different levels of risk. Yep, yep. So all feet are not created equal. Um, and the good news is with um, the majority of people, probably about 65-70% of people with um, diabetes have low risk feet. They don't have any um, changes to their blood flow or their nerves. So that, that's great news. And then we have a um, moderate risk and um, people that are at much higher risk. And how we ascertain or work out how, how much you're at risk is there's a few factors that can um, contribute to that and one of them is how well you can feel things like light touch just simply something as light as me touching my thumb some people can't detect that and that tells us that they're um, starting to lose their nerves aren't working as well the other thing that um, you'd get checked is your pulses in your feet um, if we can feel the pulses and the blood flow in your feet if those things are okay then your feet are at much lower risk of um, developing problems and then if you've got some either sensation loss or um, just one of those other problems then you're at increased risk and when we say increased risk it's probably over a year you've got six times increased chance of perhaps getting uh, uh, ulcer on your foot but if somebody's told they've got high risk feet you do need to take care because you've actually got about an 83 fold or eight um, increased chance of something going wrong with your feet over the year and so because you can't feel and your blood flow may not be as good so that tells us um, who needs to take care and those people would um, t attend their um, podiatrist regularly and they would also get their feet checked each time they went into their um, doctor or nurse as well so I think um, you guys have just released a really good um, video with uh, um, Aaron and a, um, another podiatrist that was showing exactly what happens when you do have that um, foot screen done. Yep. And those little things I was describing, if you get a chance to have a look at that video, Lawrence talks you through that really nicely. But those are the things that tell us the risk. And then what you do with that Somebody, um, I think somebody asked um, earlier about uh, the beach bare feet because some is... Yes, there is a question there about yeah. that. Yeah, and that's where and that also, risk comes um, from. Yeah, I was going to say, and also on that, in the video, it does talk about wearing shoes indoors and outdoors to protect your feet. Is that appropriate for everybody at every level of risk? I would... Um, my advice would be for those at moderate and increased risk, definitely. Those mm -hmm. with um, low, low risk, it would be something that you would um, have a think about what your indoor environment's like. Is there likely to be sharp things on the floor that your kids have left around or, um, you know, what that environment's like? Um, yeah. Yeah, so not, not so necessary. 
same with um, hanging out at the beach, but I still wouldn't go places where your feet are at risk of getting injured in bare feet. I wouldn't take mm-hmm. up fire walking or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. That's good to know. By the way, for anybody who's just joined the live stream, kia ora, welcome. I'm Monique Bradley. Uh, we're here talking about foot health this month. It's um, step up for diabetes, looking after your foot health. It's a, it's often uh, not a topic necessarily talked about, but foot health is super important. If you, regardless of the type of diabetes that you have, um, you've got to look after your feet because they're here to look after you for the for the rest of your life. Um, one of the questions that's also come through, Michelle, before we pop over to Aaron, um, a question's come through from Amy, and that's about numbness in the feet. You also mentioned a term neuropathy before. So can you just tell us a little bit about what does numbness in the feet actually mean? Okay, so we, it's um, sometimes we think of pain as annoying and a problem, but it's actually a, a gift because it tells us when something's wrong. Um, and with diabetes, the, the um, little nerves that go all the way down to your feet, um, they can get damaged and the messages don't p- pass back up to your um, brain to tell you that I've stood on something sharp and I need to get off it. It doesn't necessarily hurt or something's hot on my foot and I don't feel it till it's actually quite badly burned. Um, so neuropathy just means neuro's nerve and pathy means um, illness or sick or so it's that your nerves are damaged so when they're using that big word they're just telling you that your nerves aren't working right and they're not giving you this um, you're not getting the right messages back to your brain to tell you to take the right action to keep yourself um, your feet protected I think of it a bit like you know when something comes fast towards your eye you will blink it's an automatic re- reaction yep. if you put yourself on something um, sharp or hot you'll pull off straight away We'll think it's a bit delayed. You'll probably feel it's hot, but by the time you do, it's um, damaged. We've had cases at, at the hospital where people have got in their car and got to where they're going and their shoes back in the gutter because they didn't feel it fall off their feet. So it can get quite or walked on a nail and the board's dragging along behind them because they didn't feel it. So it can get quite um, severe but wow. um, for some people it's just, and you, it's so gradual and so subtle because you can't feel it. You don't know yes. that you haven't got it. Yeah, that makes sense. I absolutely understand, I understand. Hey, so if this, for anybody watching the live stream, if some of these signs and symptoms are resonating with you, please talk to your GP, talk to your diabetes nurse, please reach out for help. You can also head to the diabetes website. So there's, um, it's diabetesactionmonth.org.nz or you can head to diabetes.org.nz uh, or you can call their 0800 number, which is 0800 diabetes as well and call out for help. I'm gonna jump very quickly onto the live stream and just check out some of your comments as well before we head over to Aaron. We've got, oh, I've got a quick question. Oh, a great question actually, which I'm gonna ask the both of you. How old should you be to go to the podiatrist? A great question. Now, originally you were saying, um, Michelle, from um, the cradle right through. So let's warm you up, Aaron, get you into the conversation. When should people uh, be going to see a a, um, podiatrist? Um, yeah, I, I think there's there's no age limit really. We can see, um, as Michelle said, we uh, we can see a whole range of people, right from little kids to um, much older adults. Uh, it probably depends on um, your reasons for coming to see us. So if um, you've got something you're concerned about, if you're wanting a, a foot check, um, and and you're wanting to get your feet checked in relation to your diabetes, uh, then I think yeah, there's no age limit really, any time. Mm. Perfect, excellent. And you would say the same, Michelle? Definitely, yep. (laughs) Great (laughs) stuff. All right, I'm just having a look through the news feed before we jump onto some questions for Aaron. Hey, thanks everybody for sending in your questions. It's great to have you part of the chat. Do send your questions through and time permitting, we will get those through to our experts. Um, Wow, there's some great questions, including red warts under the skin on the sole of my feet. Sometimes they blister. Can I dig them out with a sharp knife? Well, firstly, I would say, oh, that doesn't sound very good. I'm going to throw that actually to our experts. Is that the sort of thing you should be treating yourself at home? I, I personally, 
I I wouldn't be, but um, I would be recommending to find out, get them checked and find out actually what they are and what might be the best treatment, um, why they're reoccurring and what's happening with them. That would be my first thing. A really good question there, thank you. What, what are your thoughts on that, Erin? Yeah, absolutely, I agree. You don't want to do any more damage um, by accidentally cutting a bit of stuff off that you're not meant to cut off. Yes, I would totally agree there. Um, there's a lot of questions tonight about numbness and we've, Michelle, we've already heard a little bit from you around that. Aaron, do you want to open up a little bit of your experience with uh, what you've seen with people who are struggling with numbness in the feet and some tips on what they should be doing around that? Aaron, over to you. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I think it's, that's, that's been covered pretty well, but um, I think if you're, if you're struggling with um, losing a little bit of the feeling in your feet, and, and as we've, we've talked about, that might be something that um, you might not notice until, well, it's hard to notice that something's not there. Um, so yeah, I think making sure um, you're wearing suitable shoes and you're, you're, you're sort of protecting your feet, um, making sure that you're not at risk of any kind of um, stepping on things and, and hot things, um, as has already been talked about. Um, I think those are probably the most important things to think about. Great stuff. Now, one other question before we jump into a little bit more and talking about shoes and looking after your feet with Erin. Um, Rachel has just said, I get really bad cracked heels and some splitting or layering. And Michelle, you were just mentioning a little bit about that before. Um, so the, um, Mich Rachel is getting that on the side of her feet. I've recently been to a podiatrist and she took off a little bit. Um, she said the term crusty bits, but she doesn't know the technical term for it. Um, but can I, do, can I do this for other parts of my feet as well? Should I be doing this at home? Or is, again, is this something that you should be, it should be done with a professional? Yeah, I think um, I personally wouldn't be taking a sharp implement um, to my feet. Um, I, we've all seen, I'm sure you could search on YouTube and find some pretty gruesome things that people do do. But I think I mentioned before about the um, like the foot dresser, the um, sandpaper paddle. That, that works really well, especially if you do it regularly to keep that hard, dry skin down. And, it, and then if you go regularly to your podiatrist and putting um, creams on them as well, sometimes if it's um, quite badly cracked, um, you can get different strength urea creams, urea-based creams. So... Um, a 10% one might be appropriate for general foot um, care, but if you've got cracked heels, it might be a 20% um, urea cream. There's proprietary ones you can buy. Sometimes your doctor can um, prescribe one that you, a pharmacist can make up. And there's also other types of creams, um, some that have, uh, they, they work differently. They're emollient or they um, attract water into the skin. So I think, Keeping that dry skin down and applying some cream regularly would help seeing your podiatrist. But also the other thing I think, um, and this is coming into summer again, is we tend to go into sandals or jandals or bare feet or, um, and our feet do get drier and more cracked around the heels during the summer. So being um, aware that you will need to take a bit more care of them and sometimes getting a sandal, I don't know, Aaron, you might want to add to this, but you know how you can get sandals with closed in heels that might protect that part of your foot um, versus a full closed in shoe. Depending again, know your risk, depending on your risk for your feet. Good, great point actually. Now I know Aaron we're going to be talking about some of the biomechanics of feet and um, about the shoes to wear. Now I did notice one question that came through already in the feed is somebody who has just recently been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and was told not to wear open toe shoes. So I just want to um, find out your thoughts around this. Aaron we'll, we'll cross over to you. What are your thoughts around wearing open toed shoes? Yeah, I think it depends, um, as Michelle said, it depends on your risk level. So someone that is low risk, um, well, as long as they're aware of the environment and, and they can probably get away with that a little bit more. Um, if you're mm -hmm. a, someone that's higher risk, then perhaps it's something you've got to be a little bit more uh, conscious of. 
great. Very good point, very good point. Now, by the way, for anybody who has just joined the live stream, kia ora, welcome. I'm Monique Bradley. Great to have you with us. Keep your questions coming through. If we don't get to your questions tonight, um, the team from Diabetes New Zealand will go through and, and start answering those questions. I know there's a few of you who have now, since I mentioned the new My Diabetes Journey app, which has just launched. Um, uh, if you want to download your version, it's available through the App Store or through Google Play, so you can download that right now. It is a fantastic app. There's all sorts of things to do with a wellness, well-being, mindset. There's even um, exercise activities that you can do in there, and it's a great opportunity to actually chart things like your mood and, and take photos of your feet and upload those so you can really monitor monitor your foot health um, over the coming months and years and really maintain your wellness. So Aaron, we've got questions for you that have already come in. So it says, uh, one of the first questions is, I know that one of the things a podiatrist, a podiatrist does is look at the biomechanics, it's a big word, of your feet. So that's basically how the feet move um, and also how the type of footwear that somebody living with diabetes should be wearing. So what is involved with that? Yeah, you're right. So um, biomechanics is basically just to, to put simply the study of how our bodies move. Um, so that includes our, our muscles, our tendons, our joints, our ligaments and, and everything else. Um, and this is something that podiatrists um, are well trained in and are really knowledgeable in um, and specifically how it relates to your feet and your legs. Um, so this is something where if you go to see a podiatrist, they are quite likely to do um, an assessment on you. Um, where they'll have a look at your biomechanics or, or the way that you move. Um, so they might look at things like your your foot posture, sort of the shape of your foot, um, how your joints move, are some of your joints a bit stiff or um, are some of your muscles a little bit tight. Um, they might have a look at the way that you walk. Um, they might have a look at some sort of pressures underneath your feet and things like that. Um, and any of these things are just, I guess, trying to help us um, predict um, or preempt anything that might put you at risk or might um, mm -hmm. increase your chances of developing some kind of um, complications potentially. So one of the big ones, um, especially for people living with diabetes is um, pressure underneath your feet. And there's, there's a number of things that could impact that. So for example, if your calves are a bit tight, um, we know that you're gonna increase the amount of pressure under the ball, under the ball of your foot um, and so if you go to see someone and they assess you, um, they might be able to suggest a particular type of footwear or, or possibly some stretches or some other things that um, could help you to minimise the risk of um, having any complications or any issues like that with your feet. It's, it's such a good point and I think for people who haven't even been through the process of having their feet examined, it's, I think it's so important. I've just been through this with you guys over the last um, few weeks, getting my feet checked, especially because I was pre-diabetic and ne I, I still need to maintain my foot health as well. It was nowhere near as scary and I learnt so much, like I learnt the fact that y you guys can tell professionally that I was a dancer a long time ago because of the way that my, my, um, my legs um, were very unstretched and that I had extra, um, extra skin, in fact, under the ball of my feet from being up on my toes, things like that, which can potentially pose a risk for someone with diabetes, is that correct? Yeah, if there's, um, if there's increase and pressure underneath any parts of your feet, um, then that can mean that, that possibly there might be um, a higher chance of some kind of um, tissue breakdown or something happening in that area. And then if that's coupled with a little bit of loss of feeling, then you might not notice it. Um, and those kind of things can turn into something potentially before you've you've noticed them too much. So. Um, just being aware of, of where you've got areas of pressure. Um, and that might be things that are contributed to, as you've said, um, because of a history of dancing or something else like that. Um, or maybe it's just because um, you've got the particular shape of your foot that means that there's like a bony area that um, is, is on part of your foot that's gonna press on your shoe or um, something else like that. Okay, so let's talk about footwear because you know we opened up that conversation with somebody inquiring about open toe shoes. But how important is it for people with diabetes to choose the right shoes? Yeah, it's it's really important. So we know that shoes are 
a pretty significant contributing factor to um, risk with diabetes. So for someone who um, has ill-fitting shoes or, or shoes that aren't quite the right shape or size for your feet, then we know that that can pose a risk. Um, one of the things, or one of the most important uh, considerations would be the width of your shoes. Um, so we often, you know, if you go to um, go to buy a new pair of shoes, most of us probably have a rough idea of what sort of shoe size we are, um, but that might not factor in what width your foot is. I think that's something that's overlooked by probably a lot of people. Um, and if the shoe is too narrow for your foot, again, it comes back to these pressure points we were talking about before. So um, if your shoe is too narrow, then that's going to potentially mean that the the sides are basically closing in on your foot and are going to squash your foot a little bit and possibly um, rub on your feet and things like that. Right. And that's that's something that somebody with diabetes, especially if they've got some numbness, they obviously need to keep an eye out for, right? Yeah, yeah. So you might, you might not notice if you've got a little bit of numbness there, you might not notice that it's rubbing and you might not mm. um, see it as a problem um, until it then possibly causes things like blisters and, and other issues like that. So which may be a challenge to heal and that sort of thing. Great, yeah. got it, I understand. So let's talk about shoes. Now I had the very great honour of being fitted for the right shoes um, the other week by you, so thank you very much for that. Let's talk about what people should be looking for, um, some tips around selecting the right shoes, because I have to say, these are the best shoes I have ever worn in my entire life. Super comfortable, the best. So let's talk through what people with diabetes should be looking for when it comes to choosing the right shoes. Yeah, um, there's a couple of things. Excuse these shoes. These are shoes I actually wear regularly, so they're a bit muddy. But um, you're looking for, um, firstly, the upper. So this is the material that is around the top of the shoe here. Um, want to make sure that that's nice and breathable. Um, you want to make sure that there's a, a, um, a, a like either lacing system or even just Velcro or some kind of way of actually fixing the um, shoe to your foot. We know that if um, if it's secure on your foot, it's not going to slip around as much. Um, your foot's not moving around inside the shoe. Or sometimes if the shoe's not, um, possibly a silly analogy, but if the shoe's not holding onto your foot, your foot tends to hold onto the shoe a little bit more. And that might mean you kind of bunch your toes up or, or change the position of your, or the shape of your foot, which then can, again can contribute to pressures under your feet. Um, so a breathable upper, um, a way of fixing it to your foot. Um, making sure it feels nice and soft inside. So if you put your hand inside the shoe, you can actually feel for any sort of um, seams or ridges or things that might cause you irritation. Again, going back to that point um, of possibly not having any feeling and not noticing um, those things. And then secondly, when you try the shoes on, making sure that they feel comfy, basically. Um, so making sure they feel nice and soft, but also, also stable. Um, you want to make sure that the foot, uh, the shoe, sorry, doesn't make feel like it's about to fall off your foot, or it's squashing your foot, or it uh, makes you feel unstable in any way. Those things are helpful. Gotcha. Um, and I've had um, on one of the pages that we're actually live on, I've had a couple of people asking me, "What are these shoes? These are Asics shoes. Super comfortable. I'm not paid to tell you that, by the way. I actually do endorse them. Really good for power walking. Um, brilliant. And that thing you're talking about about your toes, I do often find in my other shoes that my toes tend to clench to hold onto the shoes, whereas this was like walking on cushion. I've, I never knew shoes could be so comfortable. Um, so when people are looking for shoes, they need to look for the width, um, obviously the length to make sure there's enough room and that breathable upper. I think I've got it all and um, super spongy underneath as well. Um, what about arch support? How important is that for somebody with, um, with diabetes? That sort of depends on your foot type. Um, so that's something where you're going to want to get assessed. Um, ideally by someone that knows about footwear and footwear fitting. Um, so you want to make sure that someone's had a chance to have a look at your biomechanics and look at um, how your foot moves to see whether you need that kind of thing. That probably um, comes down to the fact that the uh, arch support or the most common thing we see in shoes is we might see like a stiffer piece on the medial side um, where the material is more dense on this side. Um, and that means that if you're someone whose foot um, pronates, what we call pronates, which is basically to sort of tip in a little bit, um, then that might help to um, stop that part of the shoe compressing too much, um, which can then lead to 
changing the way that your foot moves and, and increasing pressure under certain parts of your wow. foot. Yeah. That's there's a, there's so a big good range of know. shoes, um, big range of shoes for di for different foot types and different activities. So uh, it's really important to talk to someone that knows what they're doing um, when you're getting your shoes yes, fit. Yes, okay. that's right. Especially if you if you do have foot problems and especially if you um, do have diabetes, it is really important to seek help from a professional. I totally agree. Now, one of the questions that has actually come through is how often should somebody go and see a podiatrist? Is it a once a year kind of thing or is it, should it be done regularly? But it's going to come down to your risk level as well. So people who are higher risk will need to, should ideally be coming to see a podiatrist more regularly. But it's a really good idea for anyone who has diabetes to to come in once a year or so to just check your feet and make sure that um, things aren't changing. And it's a, it's a good chance for um, someone to assess or a podiatrist to assess your feet and make sure that they can kind of keep an eye on things. And, and most importantly, that you're aware of what's happening down there um, and make sure that you know of anything to look out for. Great stuff. Now, before we head back to the live stream questions, because there's a bunch of questions that have come in, I want to know what would be your top tips um, for someone with diabetes on, on looking after their feet? Um, well, uh, ch check your feet regularly, I think is really important. Um, make sure that you understand um, your feet and understand how diabetes can affect your feet. Um, and it's like, like we've said before, it's not all, it's not all scary. It doesn't have to be a big deal, um, but it's just something you want to make sure that you're aware of uh, so that you, yeah, so that you know what your risks are uh, and what the things mm -hmm. that you can do to benefit yourself, um, whether that be some particular things you need to be aware of or whether you perhaps need to be more regularly going in to see um, a podiatrist or your diabetes nurse or someone to mm -hmm. have a look at your feet. Yeah, probably just understanding it. it is most important. Love it. Thank you so much, Erin. Right, we're going to open up to some questions from the live stream as well. Hello and welcome back, Michelle. Great to have you. Um, before we jump into that, I have to tell you at the moment, um, let's talk about Merchandise to Support um, Diabetes Action Month. Obviously, we've got this amazing T-shirt, which is which says big journeys start with small steps which I thought was beautiful and also one of the things that I've learned in my own journey is the important, uh, importance of wearing really good socks um, because there's nothing worse than rubbing um, inside your shoes, your feet rubbing inside your shoes and the next thing you've got blisters and they won't heal properly so good socks. These are super comfortable. I do want to say a big shout out to Mr Vintage who do their part to support um, Diabetes New Zealand. The most comfortable socks I've ever worn. Again, not paid to tell you that, doing it because I love them. And you can get all of um, the official merchandise on the diabetes.org.nz website. So head over there. And it, look, it's for a great cause and it helps support um, more education, more awareness to help people living with diabetes. So let's head to the questions and let's see what's going on. People are saying thank you to you both for the information about numbness. So this seems to be a very common, um, a common issue that most people are struggling with. Is there anything you can do to stop it from happening further or is it just caused by poor control? This is a very big question. Uh, Michelle, let's jump to you first. I think the person that asked that has raised a really um, good point because all of these things that we're talking about with your diabetes, the best thing that you can do is to look after your diabetes, um, manage it. I know that's easier said than done, but. Um, managing your diabetes and managing, um, you'll hear people when you go to the doctor talk about your cardiovascular risk as well. So looking after your, not just your diabetes, but your um, cholesterol and um, your blood pressure and all those things that will contribute to developing those problems. And then it is predominantly down to um, the damage caused um, by diabetes so keeping exercising is another thing keeping active is another thing that you can do as well and I just wanted to um, broach on the point too that some people may find if they've got neuropathy that their balance isn't so good because it can affect the little bits in your um, muscles your proprioceptors that tell you where you are so when you go to wash your hair in the shower and you close your eyes you might feel wobbly and when Aaron was talking about shoes wearing a good shoe may help you with your 
balance a bit more because you might be feel more wobbly and a little bit more prone to tripping because you're not sure where your feet are as well. So I think the best thing is um, prevention. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. And and Aaron, have you got anything to share on that topic as well? No, I, I think that's um, that's pretty thorough. That's the main things to be looking for. Excellent, excellent. Now, a common question that is coming up in the stream as well on all the pages that we're on is... Um, the topic of ingrown toenails. What should somebody do about them? Um, who, who wants to talk into that one first? Because I know it's a really big topic. Michelle, is that, that what you'd like to talk into? Um, yeah, the ingrown toenails, <laughs> they are a problem. I know that um, people, young people with diabetes, adolescents are more prone to, not because of their diabetes, but because of their age. Young boys, particularly adolescent boys, are more prone um, to ingrowing toenails. So around that, um, really important to keep them um, trimmed properly. And if you do start to get problems, go and see your podiatrist. And the other thing your podiatrist can do as well is minor surgery. So there's some simple um, surgical procedures where you can remove the offending piece of nail, um, take it out and destroy the root where it grows from so you've got a slightly narrower nail and the bit that's causing the problem's gone. And the podiatrist will work out your risk and will also check your blood flow before they do that. They'll have a machine, I think you might have had this done, machine a Doppler, and they'll have a listen to your blood flow and check your blood flow. A bit like the ones they um, use if, um, uh, you know, when you hapu, like for listening to the baby's heartbeat, the ultrasound. Yep. So, and they can hear the blood flow in your feet. So that's something the podiatrist will do before you. Wow. Um, they recommend that if you need surgery as well. So that, that would be a couple of things, but just know that you don't have to put up with it and can get treated and you don't, because you quite often end up with lots and lots of antibiotics for the infections as well, and that's not good either. Right. So get it, no. get it checked, get it treated. I totally agree. Now, um, there is a lot of questions around treatment as well. Oh, before we jump into that, another great question. What's a corn and what is a bunion? I know both of those terms have popped up in the chat tonight. Who's happy to talk into that one? You guys could choose tonight. Aaron, are you ready? <laughs> yeah, I, you ready I, to I, jump I, in there? I'll have a go at that one. Um, so <laughs> a, a, a bunion is um, just a change in the shape of your foot. So um, it's actually like your big toe joint um, just sort of moves to the side a little bit. So you're, it sort of becomes on that kind of shape a little bit. So you might notice that your, um, the inside part of your big toe joint sticks out a bit more. Um, and that can be really important um, because it's something that changes how your foot moves. It changes the width of your foot as well too. So when we were talking earlier about um, shoe fit, um, if something like that is developing in your foot, and it develops really slowly, um, but if something like that is, is present, then uh, that's going to change the width of your foot. I um, mean, maybe some of the pressure points under your foot as well. Um, and a corn is um, a little bit of hard skin that sort of develops generally as a result of these pressure points too. So um, right. those are quite often uncomfortable. You, you, you might notice if you've got something like that under your foot. And they're generally in those areas of high pressure uh, is where we typically get them. Great, that's good to know, very good answer. One of the questions that is coming through is around um, how do you get to see a podiatrist? So what's, what's the process around that? Um, do you go through a GP, is it a referral? Do you approach a, a podiatrist directly? Do you go through your diabetes nurse? What is the general way that people get seen? Um, there's a couple of ways I think you've touched on there you can refer yourself you can just um, podiatry New Zealand's website have just um, got a public facing part that's gone live where you can search for a podiatrist in your area which is a great place to go and you can um, go and see a podiatrist yourself if you've got diabetes and you've had a foot screen and some they've found that you've got a high risk um, most DHBs will have a um, podiatry service that your GP um, can refer you into to get your feet um, a further in-depth check like like we talked about and to get the um, regular treatment that you'll need. So there's a couple of um, different ways. Can I just jump 
back one step to the Please. corn, the corn thing. Yes. I just do do want to add a little bit there because um, two things. One, I would make sure that you, um, like Aaron said. Um, see your podiatrist and get it checked that it is a corn because a lot of people think a corn a veruca is a corn or vice versa and um, that what they've got is a veruca when it's a corn and the treatment's quite different because a veruca is caused by a virus it's a wart and a right. corn like Aaron said is caused by pressure and if you have diabetes and your foot's at risk please don't use um, corn plasters because they've got acid in them and that acid can will eat away at your good skin as well as the hard skin and it can cause a foot oh, wow. ulcer. So please, I just thought I'd add that. Um, a a really there. good point. Thank you so much for that, Michelle. And in fact, on that note, there's a few questions that have come in around fungus, so nail fungus, and also athlete's foot as well. Um, and people, again, saying that they find it difficult to treat um, nail fungus and they find it difficult to treat athlete's foot. Um, have you guys got any suggestions around what can be done to get treatment? Who should these people be talking to? Where can they go for help? I've put you both on the do spot. You... <laughs> Michelle, do you want to jump on that one? Okay. Um, it is it is really um, challenging with nails because um, toenails grow quite slowly and if you've got, say, just one nail and if infected then topical painting topical lacquer on and getting um, the nail reduced by a podiatrist can actually work quite well but if it's multiple nails um, you may require some medication from your doctor and some um, podiatrists also provide some other treatments for fungal nails people with diabetes are more prone to fungal infections in their feet athletes foot because of the changes in um, Neuropathy can also affect the way um, your sweat glands work in your feet. If you get something called autonomic or your auto automatic nervous system and your feet get a bit drier and your skin, it changes your skin pH and you're more prone to getting um, the fungal infections. So that's something to be aware of. And sometimes it can infect your um, around your whole foot. So you've got to be treating sometimes your whole foot and and your shoes because they like dark damp places and shoes are wonderful for fungal infections so i think that would be um really some yeah so i'd say very good point excellent i know that there are a few people on the stream as well who've talking um talked about being a little bit nervous about going to see uh, a podiatrist or getting their feet checked i've just been through um a, a foot check myself and i can tell you hand on heart anybody who's watching if you are scared you do not need to be you can actually watch me on the um uh, on the website, the diabetes.org.nz website, going through a foot check and um, you can see everything they do. It was so comfortable, I was actually giggling. So, and I'm quite foot sensitive, so if I can do it, you can do it too. Now, one of the things that's actually come up is a really good question. People really struggling with heat and cold in their feet. Now, this is something that I experienced myself when I was pre-diabetic. I used to get really cold feet, and I know there's a lot of people in the stream who are talking about this too. And I actually um, used a hot water bottle. I ended up with a burn and an ulcer on my leg from that because I couldn't feel it. And I, it took for me, it took 18 months to heal. I feel happy to share that with anybody on the stream watching, but it did heal. It just took time. Time. So I want to talk into this point because a few people have been talking about exactly the same thing that I experienced in this stream. So Michelle, Aaron, should somebody with diabetes be using a hot water bottle if their feet are cold? Michelle, should we start with you? I um, I wouldn't recommend it. And what we talk about is for a hot water bottle, for some pe people I know, um, who've got cold feet and they've got nothing around have filled, um, say, uh, plastic milk bottles with hot hot water. So just in anything like that, that's got intense heat, even putting them up against a by heater, sometimes people fall asleep and burn, get burnt that way as well. So if you do have nerve damage, um, I would be, or neuropathy, I would be very cautious about using, um, putting your feet near heaters or using hot water bottles. Um, a good pair of um, socks, I, I always think of it as frosty feet, they're a pain because you get into bed at night, they're still freezing cold. So something that's a bit more diffuse, like if you've got an electric blanket, um, 
warming up your socks and putting warm socks onto your feet is a really good way of doing that. And, and wool's a really good insulator, so um, wool socks can work particularly well as well. So yeah, that would be my um, some tips. So warm your socks, not your feet. That's a great point. I wish I had have known that some years ago. Fantastic point. And for those of you who were asking uh, about that in the live stream, I hope that's uh, in the feed. I hope that's answered your questions as well. Um, I know that there's a lot of people who have been talking about wearing bare feet in the stream as well. And you mentioned before talking about verrucas um, uh, as well. What should be what should people be doing specifically with verrucas? You you touched on that very um, in very lightly there Michelle so is and for either of you is that the thing sort of thing that people should be going straight to a podiatrist or is do they see the GP about that what's the next step in the journey for them do you want to take that one Aaron yeah go for it Aaron you can do it <laughs> um I, I think you you can see your GP for something like that I mean podiatrists uh um specialize in treating this this part of our body our feet so um, a podiatrist is going to be best equipped to um, give you some advice on what to do and, and to treat it for you um, so it's something that is probably a good idea to, to go and get treated and assessed um, certainly before you try and do any home treatments or anything like that uh, yourself at home Perfect, I love it. And I just want to say thank you to everybody in the stream as well. Um, all of, aside from people who are asking questions, it's great to see people who are living with diabetes as well or have family members with diabetes who are actually sharing tips. Um, somebody's just put in there that they find if they have to wear cro um, wear shoes inside, they wear things like Crocs around the house, which are easy to slip on and off and, and super comfortable, um, which is fantastic. Now, I know we haven't had a chance to get to everybody's questions, but I'm aware that we've been live for an hour. Um, so what we're going to do is after the live stream, the team from Diabetes New Zealand will hop in and answer as many questions as possible. But do remember that diabetes.org.nz is an incredible website that is full of information um, and help so if you have any questions uh, often the questions you're asking are listed in the website with loads of information and there is a specific area in the website all about foot health where you can see me going through the process of having my feet checked you'll hear information from podiatrists as well so do head to the website so you can head to diabetesactionmonth.org there's the details on the uh, bottom of the screen there for you um, it is time for us to head away so thank you everybody for being part of the live stream and I do want to say thank you a big thank you to our experts Michelle Garrett there at the top of the screen and Aaron Jackson kia ora to you both thank you for being with us through this um, live stream and for sharing your knowledge and expertise with everybody. I know there's so many lovely comments coming through the feed, thanking you guys for your help um, with these questions, so thank you. All right, well, that is the end of our live stream tonight. Thank you all for joining us. As mentioned, um, if you haven't had your question answered, the team at Diabetes New Zealand will get on to answering those questions as much as possible. But if you do need help, of course, you can reach out. You can call 0800 Diabetes. You can head to diabetes.org.nz. There's a wealth of knowledge on that website. Talk to your diabetes nurse. Talk to your GP. And remember to download the My Diabetes Journey app, which is available in the App Store and Google Play. Download it now because you can monitor your well-being on a daily basis. You can take photos of your feet and if you do notice any changes, that's a great opportunity for you to share those images with whoever is your healthcare practitioner and they can help you stay well. So I hope you have taken away all the information you need to look after yourself and your well-being. Whether you're type 1, type 2, whatever type of diabetes you have, we are all in this together, whether you're, you're struggling with the symptoms of, and challenges of diabetes or you're looking after family members. We're all in it together, Fano. So the more that we can share through these conversations and the more that we can help each other, the better we will all be through this journey. So thank you so much for joining us. Again, a big shout out to Mr. Vintage who do uh, amazing design work to help raise much needed funds to help keep education coming out there for anybody living um, with diabetes. And 
Also, I want to say a big shout out coming up on Friday the 19th of November is the first official Step Up for Diabetes Day. So we would love for you, if you've got the t-shirts, if you've got um, the amazing socks, or if you've got bold and beautiful shoes which are super comfortable in your own diabetes uh, journey, take photos, upload them to the internet, let's all celebrate together. Let's celebrate being well and looking after ourselves because we are worth it. Right, time for me to head away. My name's Monique Bradley. Thank you so much to everybody on the stream. Big shout out to the amazing work um, from the team at Diabetes New Zealand who are doing their part to look after everyone. We will see you for the next live stream coming up very soon. Make sure you um, head to the Diabetes Facebook page if you're not on the page now. Click like so you can stay in touch and I look forward to seeing you all again. Ka kite anō, e no hora.